Well, that crack can't be good. Uh-oh. Alrighty, so today we are going to be installing heated mirrors into my Crown Vic. This came without heated mirrors, but since I live in the middle of Alberta, it gets fairly cold in the winter and my mirrors will frost up. So, it's kind of a lie, because I've already installed heated mirrors and I just have to replace the one because it cracked, that one over there in fact. And um, so I've already done it and I know it works, but I'm going to be showing you on both sides how to remove the mirror and replace the mirror. And if you don't have heated mirrors in your uh, 2000, I believe it's 2006 to 2011 ish, somewhere in there. Don't quote me on those on those years. Um, you can install the heated mirrors because the wiring harness is the exact same. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started by removing the door panel. Alrighty, so the door panel itself isn't too terribly difficult to remove. We're going to start with uh, removing. Uh, there's three bolts, three seven millimeter. One here, and two kind of on the bottom. You can feel them. You really can't see them. It's hard to get a good angle in there, but there is three. One there, one here, and one here. So we'll get started with that. Alrighty, and with those removed, the next step is to get the seven millimeter under your door controls here. This one's kind of a pain to get off and it feels very, very weird trying to get it off. Because you actually have to remove this, which is kind of difficult to get off sometimes. It kind of gets caught up in the front here. And you don't want to break any of these clips because they're all plastic. So with that off, I'll reposition the camera and show you the seven millimeter. With the door controls as well, you should also undo the pigtails, four of them, and set this aside just so that you can fit this through this little hole so that you can get the uh, door panel off. If I can get this last pigtail off. Perfect. Alrighty. So you can just barely see the seven millimeter right here. So we'll get in there and remove it. Maybe. Alrighty, and there's that removed. Alrighty, so the next step of this is to get this little cover off that is behind your door um, handle. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get away with just using my finger, am I? Use like a knife or a flathead screwdriver to pop that off. And make sure you hold on to this. Don't drop it because it is a nice little cosmetic piece. Um, especially don't drop it on gravel if you have a beige piece because it will be darn near impossible to find. Now we can take a T27 and begin to undo this torque bit. And with that out, you can kind of just wiggle that free. And that should be all we need to do to pull the door panel off. So this is probably the hardest part, is actually getting the door panel off. It's kind of a bit of an art form. What I like to do is just kind of go in and just, I like to lock the door so that that's uh, down so that it doesn't get caught. Just give it a good pull up. I should, just kind of. Go free. There we go. Now, I can't show you this very easily, but there is one last cable that needs to be undone, and that controls the uh, power seats. So it's just a really easy pigtail to just undo. And oh, and if you have a civilian model Crown Vic, the trunk release also needs to be undone. Don't forget about that. Alrighty, and with all the clips undone and all of the pigtails. Um, unclipped, you can just pull the door off and set it aside. Okay, so with the door panel removed, um, there is this like little plastic bit. It's held on with a metal clip so you don't have to worry too much about breaking it. Just pulls off. It kind of popped off because I've already done this once or twice. And behind that is this plastic bit. It is already loose on mine, but I think there is some adhesive on it. And there's, um, I don't know what you call these, but there's a thing there. It keeps it in place. And we do... I wonder if we can get away without having to remove it. I don't think you can get away without removing it. Nope. So what we'll have to do is just kind of wiggle this free. It should hopefully just kind of wiggle off. There we go. And with a bit of gentle persuasion, that has finally come off. Next, we're gonna need to bust out an 11 millimeter. So now that we have access to all three bolts, there's actually one other thing that we have to do. 
and that is remove the speaker because there is a pigtail behind there that um, connects the mirror to everything else. So I'm just gonna reposition the camera and show you guys that. Alrighty, so the speaker is held in with three Phillips head screws, one here, here, and here, and a pigtail. Alrighty, and with those screws removed, you can kind of pull the speaker out and you can see the pigtail right here that we can just quickly undo just to get it out of the way. Uh, be careful, the speaker is magnetic, so don't get it close to any screws because they will uh, stick to it, as you can see. I don't quite know exactly what this screw is for, but you can see it sticks to it. And if we look behind here, I don't think there's any real good way to show you guys this, but there is a pigtail. It's about right here. In fact, there is a, um, a little thing that holds it in place. I don't know what you call those. But there's a thing that holds it in place and the pigtail itself you just kind of have to bend the one end back and pull just like that it's out Alrighty, and now we can get to work on the bolts up here there's two here and one up here and they are 11 millimeters Ooh. there we go and there it is now up to the front of the car we can actually remove the mirror itself and it should just kind of come up with a little bit of a jiggle. And just like that, whoops, we can pull it out. And pull that cable that we removed that pigtail through. And the mirror is removed. Now at this point we can grab our new heated mirror and kind of set it into place and do the exact opposite of what we just finished doing. Oh, and you probably want to get the pigtail down in there too. That might help. And with the pigtail kind of fed through there, you can set it in place and get to work installing it. We will add the bolts just like we took them off. Now we can reattach that pigtail that's in here. Now we can put the speaker back into place. Uh, oh, and don't forget to put that pigtail on. And now we can begin the task of getting the door panel back into place. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to get this pigtail and this pigtail down here back into place. I personally find it helpful to just get one or two of the little hooks into place so that it just kind of stays there and then we can clip that in and we can clip this guy in. And don't forget to feed through these cables here so that we can get the uh, little control panel back on. Make sure to feed the lock through its little hole. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. Actually, I just realized we can just kind of leave this in place. It shouldn't move too badly. But I forgot to put this black thing back into place. So I'll grab that. Just kind of set it in here. And line up the little clip there with its little hole. And just push it into place. Just get that in there. And that other black piece here can actually go in after we get the door panel back in place. Alrighty, back to this. So don't forget to get your little door lock back into place and it should just kind of seat down nicely. And there it is, nice. So I'll just make sure that all the locks are functioning properly by getting this guy back into place. 
And now would also be a great time to test your mirror to make sure that it's working fully. So you can just take this, switch your automatic mirror controls to the one you just replaced, and I can hear it moving. And make sure that the locks work, particularly this one, which it does. And we won't snap this back into place because we have a screw to put in there, which will be the first one that we will put in there. Alrighty, now we can start getting the bolts back into place, and I'm going to start with this one here. And with that one tightened down, we can move on to this one here. So first, we will get the door handle back into place here. Awesome. And we'll get that big T27. Alrighty, and with that about hand tight, we'll just tighten it up just a little bit extra just so that it doesn't go anywhere. I think that's good. Now we can put that little plastic cover back into place so that it looks pretty. Perfect. And we can now get this back into its place as well. Starting with the, actually we'll start with the back and then snap it into the front. Perfect. And finally we just have these three bolts to put back into place. So that's the driver's side. The passenger side is very, very similar, but I'll show you over there as well, just in case. And the same thing will have to be done with this um, passenger side controls. Just kind of pop it up a bit. There we go. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. Then we'll get this bolt here which I've already shown you on the other side, so I don't think I should have to show you on this side. And at this point, we can just pull. And the door panel just comes right off. Don't forget to undo this one pigtail that's in here. And we can set this aside. undo the pigtail and set that aside. Now we can also go in here, reach in here and undo the um, pigtail for the mirror. There we go. And don't forget to just push this through so that we don't forget about it and so it doesn't rattle around. Now we can remove this, just kind of pull it through. There we go. That's that little bit of adhesive you can hear. And we will undo this. There we go. And we can undo the three 11 millimeter bolts in there. Alrighty. And out with the old. And in with the new. the other side and get that installed. Alrighty, and with everything buttoned up, I now officially have fully functioning heated mirrors. Now really all I had to do in this video was replace this mirror because it was cracked, but like I said, you can entirely uh, replace your old mirrors as long as they're power with these heated ones and they'll work just fine. The way you actually turn on the heated mirrors is in the car here. You just use your rear window defroster. When you press that, it will start the heating element in the uh, mirrors as well. Anyways, that's about all. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, have a good one. Are you talking to someone out there or just yourself? My camera. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I mess it up? <laughs>
No. Okay, I'm leaving. I'm getting out of the way. <laughs> oh, I love my mom. <laughs>